Okay, so this is our next video for Math 1560, Calculus 1 at U of L for Fall 2017. Um, we're just going to take a quick moment here to introduce summation notation. Um, this is something that we're going to have to revisit um, in pretty soon when we start talking about integration, we start talking about Riemann sums, the definition of the integral. We're going to see that we need we need this notation there. Um, but when we want to talk about general polynomials, this is also something that's useful to have, so this seems like a good time to kind of mention it, and then we'll come back to it again when we get to Riemann sums, and then you'll be seeing things for the second time if you've never seen this notation before. Um, so summation notation gives us a way of writing down a sum of numbers using kind of in, in a compact form. So the the summation notation, so this is also known as um, sigma notation, because uh, the notation for a sum is this big sigma. So this this guy here, this is a capital sigma, one of the Greek letters. Um, so, so this sigma notation just gives you a way of, of writing down a sum of numbers. So rather than saying a1 plus a2 plus a3 plus a4 plus a5 plus a, you know, we can just say uh, the sum of all the ai's with i going from 1 up to n, right? So if we wanted to add 10 numbers, we'd say we want to we want to sum the first 10 numbers. So we're going to sum ai for i going from 1 to 10, right? So the way we would um, we would read this is we would we would read this as the sum of a sub i with i from uh, not 1 in this case, 0, from 0 to n is how we would read that. Um, Okay, and and these numbers, right? The the sub we're using a subscript here rather than calling them say A B C D because uh, we don't know how many numbers we might have to add up. We might have to add up hundreds or thousands or millions of numbers, and you know, if if we're dealing with millions of numbers, we're we're going to run out of letters a lot sooner than we run out of numbers, and so index notation, putting this subscript. Um, lets us write out this sum without needing to kind of, you know, go to an overly large alphabet. So a sub 0, a sub 1, a sub 2, they each represent a different number in this list. Um, so i here, um, i is sometimes called the uh, the index of the sum, or index of summation. Um, and that's just a way of telling you where you are in the sum. So i is this this lookup function. It's this it's this pointer. It's this reference that tells you which thing you're looking at, right? So a4, we know. Okay, we're looking at the fourth number in the list, right? So, so if I have my list of numbers like this one here, right? I, I number them by position. So I, so sometimes we'll start our our numbering at zero. Sometimes at one. So we say there's there's position zero, one, two, three, four, right? So we we just number them according to their position, and then that's how we, we identify these numbers. Okay. Um, now, frequently when we're doing these, um, we'll have some sort of expression that tells us how to find these numbers. Right? So the a sub i's, there might be some rule for computing them, right? So for ex in, in this example, a sub i equals 2i plus 1 um, means we're, we're looking at this case at odd odd integers, right? Uh, this index i is always an integer, right? It could be 0, 1, 2, 3, and so on, right? So if I wanted to talk about, okay, the sum of the first six positive odd integers, right? Um, so that would be 1, 3, 5, 7, 9, and 11. One of the ways that I could do that is is I could say, well, what I'm doing here is I'm doing the uh, the sum i going from 0 to 5 of a i is 2i um, plus 1. Okay? 
And so what that notation says I should do is I should do a0 plus a1 plus a2 plus a3 plus a4. So for each value of i, starting at 0 and ending at 5, I compute 2i plus 1. So I do 2 times 0 plus 1, I do 2 times 1 plus 1, I do 2 times 2 plus 1, 2 times 3, 2 times 4, 2 times 5. All right, I calculate each of those values, and then the big sigma tells me to add them up. All right. So if I had this sum down here, um, now we're dealing with powers of 2, uh, sum starting at 2, ending at 7. So what this is, is asking me to do, is it's asking me to do 2 to the, so the first value I see is 2, i equals 2, plus 2 to the 3, plus 2 to the 4, plus 2 to the 5, plus 2 to the 6, plus 2 to the 7, and and we stop, because that's the, the last number in our sum. And and then we add these numbers up. And you might have you might have encountered things like this before. There are ways of, of figuring out what this sum is. There are formulas. This is an example of what's called a, a geometric sum. Um, right? Each term in the in the sequence of numbers is just, you know, you multiply by two to get from one to the next. And, and there are ways of adding those up, but um, for now, we just want to understand how to actually write out the sum. We're not going to look at tricks for adding things up. You could punch these numbers into a calculator if you wanted to and figure out what they are. Okay, so this is the basic idea. And we're going to use this notation in the context of polynomials. And oh, I'm just going to do that to me again. Um, okay, let me save and close let's see if we can well, let's see if we can rescue this here um, let's close my program let's open it back up and ah, that's better okay so the reason one of the reasons we might like this um, this notation oops there's a uh, there's an error there um, is that it gives us a very compact way of writing down polynomials, right? This should be x to the k there. Um, instead of writing a0 plus a1x plus a2x squared and so on, we can just say, okay, it's the sum, k going from 0 up to n of a k x to the k, right? Um, and maybe there's some rule that's, that's determining these coefficients, maybe there is not. Um, but you know so so an example might be so here's an example that we're going to see pretty soon um we might see something like this p of x is going to be um the sum i going from 1 up to n minus 1 to the n minus 1 over n times x to the n okay so there's there's a there's a summation we could do. So this this guy here. Um, oh, I should not use n in two different places. Let's fix that up. Um, instead of n, let's use um, k, just like we did above. Okay. Um, so this is my a sub k. This number here. There's my power of x, right? X to the k. Um, so notice that this this sine factor minus one to the k k minus 1, okay, um, and if we looked at, you know, calculating this for various values of k, what do we have? Let's make a little table. When k is equal to 1, 2, 3, 4, so on. Um, so this will be minus 1 to the 0, which is 1, and then minus 1 to the 1, which is minus 1, minus 1 squared, which is plus 1 again, minus 1 cubed, which is minus 1, and so on. So this is just going to alternate back and forth between plus 1 and minus 1, depending on whether the exponent is even or odd. Um, and since we're subtracting 1, we're going to get a, a plus sign when k is odd, because k minus 1 will be even, and we're going to get a minus sign when k is even, because then k minus 1 is odd. Um, so this notation here, right, would mean if we, if we expanded it, we would be looking at, okay, so when k is equal to um, 1, we would have 1 over 
1, x to the 1, and then we get, when k is equal to 2, we get minus 1 over 2, x to the 2, and then we get 1 over 3, x to the 3, minus 1 over 4, x to the 4, and so on down to the last term, which will look like minus 1 to the n minus 1 over n times x to the n. Okay, So we can write out a polynomial like that, um, but for, you can see that, you know, I mean, the index notation feels a little bit unwieldy at first, but it certainly takes up a lot less room than writing out the entire polynomial, uh, which is why we like working with the index notation, right? It's, it's a more compact notation, it's, it's tricky notation to get the hang of, uh, but once you get a feel for this notation, then you'll be able to work more efficiently using the summation notation than you will writing out the entire polynomial every time. And, and once you learn some of the various properties for summation notation, we'll, we'll address this in a later video, once you learn those properties, uh, then things go even faster because uh, you'll learn how to manipulate these sums and there's a lots of, there are a lot of things that you can do very quickly with summation notation that would be um, difficult to do without it. All right, so we're going to stop here, and in the next video, we are going to introduce uh, Maclaurin polynomials, which is a special case of Taylor polynomials, which is the general topic of this section.